Hello and welcome to your seventh Lua lesson. In this lesson we're going to do about functions. Okay, so basically, functions execute pieces of code for you when you need them. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute. So, to create a function, you type the keyword function, and then the name of your function. I'm saying function too much. Um, say print hello. So, our application, let's say we need to print hello a lot. So what we actually have to do is we're going to make a function that prints hello for us so we don't have to keep going, oh, print, open brackets, hello, all of that. So function print hello, and then for now you just open and close these brackets, and then new line, and type what you want it to do. So we want it to print hello, so print hello, so that's what we want it to do. And then to end the function, end. Simple enough. Uh, so we can run that now, that's actually not going to do anything. There we go, that didn't do anything, because we've made the function, but now we need to call the function. So we've made someone that says hello when we tell it to, we haven't told it to yet. So to tell it to, we just get its name. So print hello, and then we open and close the brackets. Let's just execute that, there we go, it says hello. If I put this twice in the code hello, print hello, it's going to say hello twice, there we go, and that's pretty much that. Now at the moment, you'll notice, uh, you're probably thinking, sorry, uh, why have we got these brackets, there's no point in these brackets, why have they decided to put these brackets here? Well basically, what these are for, these are for if you want, um, I'll give an example, if you want to square a number for example, and you had a squared function, I think I used this example in the text tutorial, then you can't square a number without knowing what number they want to square. Uh, and these things in here, they're called parameters. So if we just type in uh, input, let's just call it. So now we have input in our brackets, it means that whenever they call the function, so whenever they call squared, they need to specify what input is. So they could specify hello as input and then we could print input, and that's just going to print hello. But let's do our squared function. So let's say we wanted to square 5. I mean, it's pretty simple, but we wanted the computer to do it for us. So the function is going, OK, 5 is the variable input. What are we going to do with it? So all we want to do is go print input times, remember, that's a little star, input. So now, if we do this, you'll see 25 is just got spat out, and that is the answer to 5 squared. Now, you're probably wondering now, okay, what if I wanted to do more than one thing with more than one number? Well, what you can do is, just comma, you can have your second thing. So, input 2. So, squared, uh, let's just say, square 2 numbers. So what it does is it's going to say, um, hang on, let me just code this. Uh, you'll notice this dot dot, this is just, um, instead of the comma, like we do on the io.write, print uses dot dot to separate. And then we just go number one, copy and paste that, number two is input two times input two. So, squared, sorry, square numbers. Okay, so let's go through what it does. It goes, okay, there's a function it's called square two numbers. It takes input and input two when you call it. And then it outputs number one colons and then does input times input. And then it does number two colons, input two times input two. And then we call the function down here so we say square two numbers, and then we specify input as five and input two as three. So let's just debug this. You notice it says number one, 25, and number two, nine. And this is what we wanted. So this is now squared two numbers for us. Uh, as you can imagine, functions are pretty useful. You can use them for all kinds of different things. Um, I've probably, did I go on to this? I'm not sure if I went on to this in the text lesson. I think I did. I think I did. Um, but basically, Sometimes, instead of printing things, because you might want to do different things with the results. In fact, let's get that back. 
let's say result one and result two. So what we've actually done now is we're going to, all right, we accept input and input two. We're now creating a new variable called result one, and that is input times input. And we have result two, which is input two times input two. But what are we going to do with these? Well, what we're going to do is, because we might not want to print it necessarily, we're going to go and return, oops, return, so we want to return a value, uh, return, let's just say result one, for, no, let's do both, result one, result two. So now what it does, hang on, I'll just call it and I'll show you, there you go, uh, let's just do five and three. So what it does, square two numbers, it goes 5 and 3, it goes up here and goes, this is 5, this is 3, result 1 is 5 times 5, result 2 is 3 times 3, and then return the value, uh, 25, and return the value of 3 squared. So what basically return means is we can refer to this now. So what we could do is if we did want to print it, we decided, we can just shove that function in a print statement, and because it returns the values... It basically means whenever you call it, this now represents result 1 and result 2. So this should now print our two answers. There we go, 25 and 9. Now, it, I did go on in the text tutorial to say how you can separate um, the 25 and the 9 out, because at the moment they're just stored in one like that. But, you know, have a read of the text tutorial. It's, it's all quite interesting. Uh, have a play around with it. I always say that. And um, have a nice day.